You know, there's actually very few shows that I consistently rewatch. I mean, trust me, with this coronavirus mess, I'm rewatching a ton of shows that I usually wouldn't rewatch. However, let's backtrack to that statement of usually. There are three anime that I usually take the time to rewatch each year because that's just how much I love them. There's Toradora, my all-time favorite romance anime with amazing character development and story. There is Pet Girl of Sakurosu, which has always held a special place in my heart and is and probably always will be my favorite anime. And then there is, of course, my teen romantic comedy or Snafu. I'm actually kind of surprised. I've only made one video on Snafu so far. I mean, I guess it's because the first two seasons came out before I was a big YouTuber. I'm, I'm still, I'm still not a big YouTuber. I'm literally a nobody still. Life be hard like that sometimes. But it's just one of those anime I always come back to because I always have the thought, was the dialogue really that good? And the answer always ends up being yes. Yes, the dialogue is just that good. I just love how the first episode of this anime is just a giant middle finger to all other anime. No big crazy world or no forming a new club with your close clique of friends. They literally shove the two main characters in a completely empty classroom and just let the dialogue flow. I know this doesn't sound like much, but trust me, this is a huge flex. Like, there's literally only two chairs in this room and nothing else. They're basically saying, hey, you can't beat our dialogue. We are willing to risk starting nearly the entire first episode of an anime in an empty classroom where our two main characters just sit down and talk to each other for 15 minutes and nothing else happens. And you know what? You're gonna love it. I'm sorry, but Nuxtaku would be so proud of this kind of flex. It's just so ballsy to start an anime out like this, and I feel like if you pitch that to any producer now, they would just laugh in your face. Well, either way, so obviously I just finished my annual rewatch of Snafu, which is great because season three is just around the corner and I wanted to have it fresh in my memory. However, there is one other reason I like watching these three shows annually. And that's because every time I've rewatched these three shows, I've seen something new in it. Rewatching anime is great because you can miss details on your first, second, or hell, even your 10th rewatch. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've missed a lot through my first few watch throughs of Snafu, Toradora, and Pet Girl of Sakurosu. And you know what? On my last rewatch, I think I finally understood one of the major themes of this anime that I never actually caught before. The snafu isn't about romance, it's about growing up. You see, each of the three main cast members represent a different part of becoming an adult. Hachiman is knowing oneself. At no point in the show does he ever doubt his own mindset. He does have it challenged a lot, but he never loses control over what kind of person he is. Hachiman is comfortable as who he is. He understands his strengths and his weaknesses, and is also able to play to them well. Actually, almost kind of to an uncomfortable extent. Yui's strength is being able to understand and read other people. She's good at reading a room, understanding how other people feel, and what to say to keep things calm. She understands what Yukino wants and understands what Hachiman wants. And finally, there's Yukino. Her ability is independence. She is able to achieve amazing goals all by herself. She can do just about anything she puts her mind to and is always willing to work hard. And if you put the three of them together, as the meme goes, you get one functioning adult. All jokes aside, it's pretty obvious that the dominant trait that each of the three characters have are severely lacking in the other two. Hachiman is okay with reading situations, but is terrible at reading them when he's personally involved. And Yukino severely struggles with reading situations and understanding other people's emotions. The same thing with Yui and Yukino when it comes to being comfortable with who they are. I mean, a major arc of the show is Yukino being afraid that she is just copying her sister. She has trouble understanding her own emotions and what she feels, 
And then Yui is kind of in the same way, but to a lesser extent. She is seen changing how she acts when she is hanging out with Hayato's clique and trying to fit in. And finally, the most obvious of the three traits, Yui and Hachimen are not independent in any way, shape, or form. Especially Hachimen. Sure, he goes out of his way and tries to accomplish goals by himself, but he almost always fails. And not to mention, there's a constant joke that he despises all forms of hard work. And Yui is, to a lesser extent, known for not being able to accomplish goals independently. Not to mention, she is also not much of a hard worker. But here is the important thing that I'm getting at. All three of the characters are learning from each other and learning how to balance out those three skills. Hachiman is understanding more about the people surrounding him. Yui is becoming more confident in who she is as a person, and Yukino is learning to rely on others. I mean, let's take a look. Hachiman wants the real thing, even though he hasn't realized that what it is, is companionship. I know love is tossed around a lot when talking about this scene, and there's definitely a lot of love in the air, but I think what he truly desires is companionship. We see Yukino begin putting her trust into Yui even staying the night at her place after she had a fight with her sister and beginning to understand her emotions even more. And most of all, we've seen just how much Yui has grown. I mean, in the final episode, she basically pulls out all the stops and practically confesses to Hachiman right in front of Yukino. She knows what she wants and who she wants to be, and she made that decision independently. All three characters are growing together and understanding that the status quo is something that just doesn't exist. If you want a prime example, look at Hayato's clique. It's played with similar problems, but instead of growing up and learning from each other, they bring Hachiman in so they can lie and deceive each other into staying just friends in the exact same way. It's revolting, and even Hayato admits that it's probably the wrong thing to do. Hell, Hachiman's even like, if your friendships are that weak, is that really friendship? Like, that's some massive shade thrown out by Hachiman, but he does have a really good point. None of the characters will grow if they don't learn to accept that staying the same is impossible. Humans change, that's just a fact. God, like I said, it's kind of crazy how much you miss when you're watching anime. I genuinely didn't get this concept of the show until I rewatched the anime like a week ago. And I've rewatched Snafu like four or five times. But I think that's what makes shows like this so great. Just because each time I rewatch it, I get to understand a different piece of the show. And so long as that continues to be the usual situation, I will keep up with my usual annual rewatching of Snafu, including season three once it comes out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey guys, how's your Corona hanging? Oh God, this. This is, this was way, I did not think this would get this bad. This is, I know, like, completely, completely different subject, but, oh. Being locked in my house, because I live in LA, for, in, like, what is this, four months, five months, six months? Dude, I don't even know anymore. Like, I'm, like, kind of losing my mind. This whole thing has just been crazy for me. And that's why I, I took last week off, just because I was, like, I needed to chill, I needed to get out and do something, so I went and did something. So that was, that was kind of nice. Just a heads up guys, I've been doing a lot more streaming. Well, I've been consistently doing streaming as much as I physically can. So if you guys wanna follow me on twitch.tv slash matt, I'll probably be streaming when this video goes live. If not, come follow me and you can just check whenever I'm streaming. I'll start like trying to schedule my streams. I've just been really bad about that just because my streams are usually pretty sporadic. But make sure you guys come join me on twitch.tv matt slash I mean, Matt, you get it. It's 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 somewhere on the video. You can look at it, or it's in the description too. Either way, a huge thing, my patrons. You guys are my heroes. Please make sure you guys share, like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Matt. Make sure you guys stay man and go watch that goddamned anime.